Now that does not mean that this is a completely stupid product. Not completely. <laughs> I'm Cliff, and this is my garage, and if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. Today, I just want to do a real quick review on this digital rear view mirror from a company, Pormido, Pormido, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's a pretty common thing right now on Amazon where you'll see, uh, not this one, but like these types of uh, digital rear view mirrors or a ton of other things, you'll see what appears to be the exact same product being sold under 20 different name brands. And what I believe is going on there is that this is like 20 different, basically made up Chinese companies. They're all purchasing the exact same thing from the factory. I actually tried a couple of different rear view digital mirrors like this from a couple other different companies that they looked identical, and when I looked at them very closely, they were identical except for very, very minor differences, uh, mainly in just like the plastic moldings. Uh, like for instance, uh, they might have a slightly different shape ventilation hole that's in exactly the same place as the other mirror. The reason I wanted to install one of these digital rear view mirrors is a little issue that I'm having with my Cayman track car where in the regular rear view mirror, the interior mirror, uh, I, I'm having trouble seeing out the back because of the crossbar of the roll cage and uh, my GoPro camera that I've got mounted back there, a couple other things. It's just really hard to see at the back. Now that's generally not an issue because I've got the side wing mirrors and I can see just fine ordinary driving. But on the track, there might be somebody right behind me on my bumper. Now, they're not being rude or dangerous. That's just how you let the person in front of you know, hey, um, I'm a, maybe a little faster than you, a little more power, whatever it is. I'd like you to let me buy. And so if you see somebody right there on your bumper, it's just standard practice that you're supposed to you know, let them give them a signal of which side you want them to pass on and let them go by. Maybe let off the throttle a little bit and just give them a safe pass. Now, my issue is that I haven't, re I don't really think I've not noticed somebody behind me, but I'm worried that I will not notice uh, a car behind me because of all the blockage looking through the rear view mirror out the back window. So my idea was to use one of these digital rear view mirrors, put it over the regular mirror, and then now the camera will give me a clear view behind me. I tried a couple of other mirrors, like I was saying, and there were some issues with those, uh, mainly with the cameras, or the, the, the quality of the image. They started out fine, but after just uh, just a very little while, maybe uh, an hour of use, the image started decaying, getting distorted, uh, gray, scratchy and grainy, little, like, almost like there was power interference. So I tried a second one, a different brand, like I was saying, looked absolutely identical. Basically, it was absolutely identical. And same issues came up. So I thought, okay, I'll spend some more money, get a more expensive mirror, and then uh, hopefully I'll avoid those issues I was having. Also, what I liked about this particular mirror was the camera that comes with it. My original setup they had was to put the camera like right above the license plate. And it gave an oddly, it gave a very weird sort of view for a rear view mirror. You're used to your rear view mirror, you know, showing things from your vantage point of, you know, your eye height. But this was, you know, very low, about probably, I'm looking over at the car there, a good two feet below my normal vantage point. And it just, it was strange. So I began looking around. What I really liked about this particular, the por Pormido? Pormido? I, I don't know. Uh, they have a, a different sort of a mount that lets you use, uh, like, 3M high-strength uh, high adhesive tape to mount the camera onto 
the glass of the rear hatch. So I was able to mount it much higher in the car and just looking at through the glass, like over the top of the ducktail and under underneath the wing, which was a perfect view. Thought I had a good answer on that one. And in my initial installation, get it, just doing it here in the garage, and I would open up the garage door so that I could, you know, look out of the um, look out the garage door to see how what the view was like looking out into the driveway. Everything seemed fine, but then in actual practice, I found that things were not so fine. Now this mirror may work perfectly fine for you. It all depends on circumstances. Now a couple of issues. That uh, well, actually, three issues that are causing me to return this mirror because it just doesn't work for me. One is the system comes with a nice little GPS antenna and it has a GPS chip built into the mirror, and it uses that for position information, of course, but it ties that with the recorded footage because this is also a combination digital rear view mirror and a dash cam. So it can record, the, you know, what's in front of you, like a regular dash cam does, sort of a dual duty thing. This little uh, camera here slides out to give you more flexibility in positioning because the way this works is it, it fits onto your regular mirror and then there's these sort of elastic bands that hook onto these little, I don't know what you call them, these little hook things here, and they wrap around the mirror and hold it on. This works surprisingly well. I was very skeptical about this, but it's actually uh, quite uh, secure feeling on there. That one issue that I had with the other models, and I'll give you a link to one of those so you'll, you'll know that that's the one with this sort of issue, versus this model is that this weighs considerably less than the other ones did. And the reason that's a good thing is because when you hook this onto your mirror, what I found was that the weight of the other ones would, would just pull the mirror down and it would be pointing downwards, which as a digital display wasn't all that big of a deal. I mean, with a mirror, of course, it wouldn't work at all. But it, it just it bothered me that it would just droop down and it, ended up, it would end up you know, like pointing down towards my chest. Uh, this one did not have that issue, so it, it would have been good from that perspective. So, uh, let's see, where was I explaining this? Ah, I was talking about the GPS. One of the issues I had was, this comes with a GPS unit, which allows this unit to automatically set the clock. It has a built-in clock, which I really didn't care about, and I wish there was a way to turn it off, but there isn't. So if I'm going to have it on, I'd like it to at least be correct. And um, the problem seems to be a bug in the firmware where you, you can't select your time zone like Eastern Standard Time, Central Daylight Time, whatever it, is, whatever it is. You have to specify it in the number of hours of offset from Greenwich Mean Time. So we're like minus five right now in in, in our time zone, Eastern Standard Time. But no matter what time zone or what hour offset I selected, it was always wrong. And what was really weird is that, like, if I set it to my, what I believe was minus five, it would be off by, you know, an hour. But if I set it to minus four, it would be off by 20 minutes. You know, as I, I would cycle through all the possibilities, because you can only set it one hour offset, which is the way time zones are designed, the time would not increment by an hour. It would change by and maybe an hour this time, but then it would change by 40 minutes, and then an hour, and then by 20 minutes. It, it just it was completely screwed up. So that was the first issue that I had with the, with the mirror. I could have lived with that. Because, like I said, I didn't really care about the time. I could have lived with it being wrong. Now, but then the second issue showed up when it actually started the engine, and that was vibration. This mount 
is not super solid. And so it allows the camera to, to vibrate just a bit. And that gives you that sort of distorted jelly roll effect that you get with digital video. And so that was not good. But I could have lived with it because the fact that it was a little distorted and jelly rollish, it was still fine for identifying whether or not there was a car right behind me. Now, the, the real killer on this mirror that is causing me to, uh, to return it is that this surface, for whatever reason, this is a digital rear view mirror. It's designed as a display. It's not supposed to be a mirror. It's supposed to be a display. But as you can see, this mirror's face is so reflective, it is, for all practical purposes, a mirror. And so what I was doing was I was looking in the rear view, or looking in this display, and the reflection of what was behind me, my, you know, looking out through the rear window of the car, was so strong, it was completely overpowering the the, the display, even on its maximum brightness. I literally couldn't see what the camera was showing me, which of course makes this completely useless. So I tried finagling with it. I mean, I thought, well, maybe there's a, there, it can be made more brighter and it can't. I had it maximum brightness. And so I could have lived with the Ma the messed up saddle, our GPS information, I, or time setting. I could have lived with the slightly jelly roll digital video effect. What I couldn't live with was the fact that this just was completely and utterly useless as a digital display. Now, that does not mean that this is a completely stupid product. Not completely. This might be perfectly fine in something like a box truck or a delivery van where you don't have anything, you don't have a window behind you, and as long as what is behind you, like the back of the cab, is not brightly lit at all or it's completely flat or something, then this may work perfectly fine. But if what's behind you is lit up, I mean, not even just a window, let's just say that, uh, you couldn't really see out the back window, then I'd be looking at the roll bar and the wing and everything else that is lit up. And again, it would be the, the reflected image would be so strong that what's the point? If you're looking at doing this for uh, something like maybe like a big motor home or a box truck or some sort of a tow vehicle where you're basically your rear window doesn't exist, this is not bad, assuming that you get one that doesn't have the defective GPS time setting. So overall, I, I'd have to you know, say that it's, for my use, absolutely useless. So just keep that in mind. Go check out your vehicle setup, whether or not you think that you know what's behind you is going to be dimly lit enough to not cause a problem with the reflections. And, uh, you know, one thing that I didn't think about was maybe you could put like a, like a film over this, like a, some sort of a matte clear film. Hmm. No, nah, I don't feel like bothering that. Yeah, possibly. But to the manufacturer, I would say, why the heck is this thing so reflective? That's not its purpose. Now, before you go, Go down there, click on that thumbs up button, give me a like on the video, and let my YouTube overlords know that you enjoyed it. Also, if you're not one of my subscribers, click on that big red shiny subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and both those things really, really do help grow the channel. And then finally, if you want to be kept up to date to all the stuff that I'm doing here in the garage and other projects, DIY stuff, go click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel. And that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliss Garage. I'll see you next time.